Hey everyone, Dan from FP Geeks here, and today I'll be reviewing the Conway Stewart Wellington in Classic Green. Now this pin was sent to me by a customer for some nib work, and while I had it over the weekend, I decided to do this short video review. This is the first time I've used a Conway Stewart for any length of time, and it's really given me a new appreciation for what they have to offer. Specifically with the Wellington, there's one design feature that you don't see in a lot of other pins, and that's this slight bulge in the cap. Now, it's hardly noticeable from a visual standpoint, but you can notice it when you run your fingers over it, which gives a, an interesting sensation compared to other pins. The clip on this pin is pretty heavy duty, and it provides a lot of tension. One thing I really like is the CS detail stamped into the top of the clip. Taking a closer look at the cap rings, we can see the various hallmarks on that bottom ring. I'm a little surprised that this area of the pin is so void of any Conway Stewart branding. It's actually very aesthetically pleasing and a good choice on Conway Stewart's part. The section on the Wellington has a pleasant shape, is made from the same material as the rest of the pen, and accented with an 18 karat solid gold band. The nib is 18 karat gold and comes in a wide variety of sizes. Conway Stewart grinds a lot of their nibs so you can get italics and stub. Around the back side we can see the plastic feed that controls the flow of ink very well. Moving on down the pin, we'll take a closer look at the barrel engraving and get a much better view of the classic green celluloid that's just one of many options available for the Wellington. Here we can get an up-close look at the barrel engraving that looks to be lasered on. It says Conway Stewart, Wellington, number 472 of 178, made in England. It's a bit of a shame the markings aren't stamped like they were in the good old days, but I'm guessing this is a bit more of an efficient option. Zooming out just a bit, we can get a good look at this classic green celluloid. Notice how as I turn the barrel, you can see the shimmer and the light green flakes. It's really eye-catching and stands out much better than I've ever seen in any photograph. Like nearly every other Conway Stewart currently produced, the Wellington is a cartridge converter filler and does accept a threaded converter. With the barrel removed, we can get a good look at just how thick the material is. Inside, there's a brass sleeve that runs the entire length of the barrel, adding enough weight to make the pen feel much more substantial in the hand than you'd expect for a pen of this size. Comparing the Wellington to a couple of other very popular pens, we can get a better idea of its size. We'll use the Pelican M800 and the Mont Blanc 146 as examples. Here in the capped position, you can see that the Wellington falls about between the two, with the Pelican M800 just a little bit bitter, bigger. But if we post them, we can really see differences start to come out. Now, the 146 is probably the most comfortable in the hand when in the posted position. And as you can see, when I get the Pelican M800 posted, the Conway Stewart will be several millimeters longer and actually pretty awkward in the hand, and that's due to the weight of the cap and just how far back on the pen it posts. But if we remove the caps, things change a little bit. Now I know a lot of people write with pens not posted, and this will make a big difference. The Pelican M800 becomes the largest pen, with the Wellington in the middle and the 146 as the smallest. I can use the Wellington all day like this, and it's a very comfortable, nicely balanced pen. But let's take a look at how it sits in the hand. Now most people might think this would be a little too small and a little too light of a pen, but thanks to that brass sleeve in the barrel, it's actually very comfortable. And when we post it, it just becomes too long and awkward for me, and we can see just how far back the cap posts on the barrel. Now, if you do prefer to write with this pen posted, you'll be happy to know that the cap posts very securely, and I wouldn't have any hesitations about doing so. Conway Stewart makes all their nibs from 18 karat gold, and they have a wide variety of sizes available. This one came with a standard medium nib that the owner wanted turned into a cursive italic. Now, I did write with it before I ground it, and it was very smooth, one of the best mediums I've ever written with. However, the cursive italic will add a little bit of flair to your handwriting. When using the medium nib, I was able to measure a line width of about 0 0.7, 0 0.75 millimeters, and after grinding it, I got it to a 0.8 millimeter stub, which is a good usable everyday line width unless you really prefer extra fine or fine nibs. 
This big 18K nib is soft, but definitely not flexible. You can see here that if you push into it, the feed just isn't capable of providing the ink flow required. The soft nib provides a wonderful rutting experience, but you really just need to be aware of its limitations. Soft does not mean flexible. However, under normal writing circumstances, I didn't have any issues with flow or hard starts or skippings or any just problematic issues. Overall, it was just an excellent performer even before I ground it. So that was the Conway Stewart Wellington. Now this is the first time I've really had a chance to sit down and uh, get to know a Conway Stewart pen. Um, I've seen them and I've handled a lot of them at, at a pen show, but um, getting to, to spend some quality time with one is, is very different. It made a, a very nice impression and I'll definitely look to add one to my collection in the future. When I do get to a pen show, I'll definitely spend some more time at the Conway Stewart table and uh, pick something that's more appropriate for me. It's, it's not that I didn't like the Wellington. It was a nice size, it has a good weight, um, and it was a very high quality pen, but I just wanted to you know, check all my options and you should too. The Wellington, it's got that gorgeous 18K nib, um, solid 18K bands accenting the barrel, and um, it's available in eight standard colors, and then they do make some special editions out of different materials sometimes. Now in the US, it sells for $669, which is a little expensive, especially for a cartridge converter, but don't let that stop you. I mean, it's an excellent pen. It's a very high quality pen, but what else is in this price range? I mean, this, this really opens up your options to a lot of different manufacturers. Um, Visconti, uh, Omos, um, heck, you could get a couple of custom Edisons for this price. Now, you are gonna notice some difference in the details in the clip. Um, of course, you're gonna lose out on that gorgeous nib, um, but you're pretty much getting a custom pen. And if the color of the material is all that interests you, I'm sure you could find something from Edison that would fit the bill and at half the price. But if you do opt for, for the Wellington, you're not gonna be disappointed at all. Um, it's a really, really nice pen and I thoroughly enjoyed it. Um, now towards the end of my shooting, the sun started to, to poke out a little bit and uh, it really showed off that iridescent sparkle in the light green flake. So I've got about an additional minute of footage after this that uh, I'd like to show you. So if you're interested, um, sit back, relax, Turn it to HD and enjoy. Thanks for watching, everyone.